Hi everyone, welcome to Ask B Square, episode 10. After 9 episodes of Ask B Square, I have been thinking that many of the topics previously that we cover are actually quite common and some people might be aware of. So today, I need to address a topic that many people are not aware of and this could be one hidden reason why your loan is rejected. So what is one loan rejection reason that many people doesn't know? After my survey, this is the one reason, BTI, which is also called the balance to income ratio. So what is balance to income ratio? Balance to income ratio is a guideline introduced by MES to all the banks in Singapore and is intended to help borrowers avoid accumulating further debts. It has been introduced in three different phrases from 1.5 to 1.9. The BTI cap is phrased in as follows. The ratio is kept at 24 times of the personal income of a person with effects from 1st June 2015 and is 18 times of the personal income of the person effect from 1st June 2017 and is further revised to 12 times on 1st June 2019. So what is balance to income ratio? It is the introduction of BTI across financial institutions in Singapore and is intended to help borrowers avoid accumulating further debts. In short, the formula would be total unsecured interest bearing balances across FI, which is I recall IBB, divided by average monthly income record with respective banks. Example, John with an annual income of 36,000 with ABC Bank and total IBB of 6,000 across different FI will have a BTI ratio of two times. This is derived based on 6,000 divided by 36,000 divided by 12. To know that computation of BTI ratio might be different across different banks depends on the income record that you provided to the banks. So wait, how do you know what is your IBB? You can take a look at your credit bureau report. Under the aggregated outstanding balance segment, Look at the unsecured interest bearing total amount. If you are unsure, do click on the video above to recap on how to read a credit bureau report. However, there are also people who are exempted from the BTI. First, foreigners. Second, there are individuals who have annual income exceeded 120,000 Singapore dollars. Three, we have individuals who have net personal assets exceeding 2 million. Let's have an illustration on how BTI may impact a customer or yourself. John's income record with ABC Bank is at 36,000 and has the following facilities with ABC Bank. He has two credit cards and a personal loan and a secured home loan. He has also other credit facilities with two other banks in Singapore. So here comes the illustration. First, we have June. In the month of June, he has an IBB with ABC Bank of 24,000 and he has an IBB with other financial institutions of zero. In total, he has a 24,000 of IBB, which means that he has an 8 times BTI ratio. This is actually below the prevailing cap of 12 times and this is past. So in the month of July, he has an IBB of 20,000 with ABC Bank. We have an IBB of 34,000 with other financial institutions. In total, he has a total of IBB of 54,000, which is 18 times. And this exceeds the 12 times, and a notification will be sent to him. Next month, which is August, he has an IBB of 15,000 with ABC Bank and 30,000 with other FI, which is total of 45,000, which actually make him have a BTI ratio of 15,000, which is also exceeding. In the last month, which is September, he has, a, he has no IBB with ABC Bank, but he has more loan, which is 39,000 with other FI. This actually gives him a total of 39,000, which actually a BTI ratio of 13 times, which is also exceeding the 12 times BTI ratio that he can actually have. With these three consecutive months, Jul July, August and September, he's actually exceeding 
his BTI ratio, he will be notified by the bank and all his other facilities will be suspended. So what happened if you exceeded the prevailing cap for three consecutive months? One, the credit card and personal loan with banks will be suspended, but the secured home loan with banks will not be impacted. Two, the unsecured facilities with other FI may be suspended too. Three, you will not be able to request for any credit limit increase on your existing unsecured facilities. And lastly, you will also not be able to apply for any new unsecured facilities. So how can you resolve your account if you get into these above issues? If your account is suspended, then go and reactivate your suspended credit facilities with your updated income documents. And if your account is not suspended, do arrange to settle or reduce your outstanding balance immediately. Okay? And remember, do submit your latest income documents to the bank for review too. So I would like to advise all of you to avoid interrupted usage of your credit card and personal loans. You should provide your latest income document to the bank if you have a higher income and also to maintain your IBB across different financial institutions to be lower than prevailing BTI cap. As long as you can pay down your total personal loan utilization and keep it within 12 months, you are pretty safe. I truly hope you learned something today. If you have any burning questions on BTI, feel free to comment below and I will help to answer your questions. Thank you and remember to subscribe to our channel and like our video. Goodbye.